So I'll uh, um, try to dovetail with what Lisa began talking about and sort of try to ground, um, you know, what we covered today in sort of tangible things so that we can talk about, uh, that we can take back to our locals and our um, organizations. I mean, you think about your political campaigns and the reliance on phones and robocalling and uh, sort of how that changes with cell phones. Getting into the mobile space is, is really critical. I think right now, like if you're not in it by this point, you better hurry up because um, pretty soon it's gonna be like your only option. There's not gonna be landlines anymore. Um, but right now, what we've found in our experience is that union members don't expect to engage with their union on, through text messaging. Like they really wanna know, you know, why why am I going to give you my mobile phone number? I don't want to interact with you that way. I, you know, I'll talk to my rep at work. Like, this is this is this doesn't make any sense to me. So I, I really encourage folks to, as they go back to their organizations, to sort of develop a wrap. Like, what what do your organizers? What does the person who answers the phone and tries to onboard folks onto your text messaging list? What's the explanation for you know why why would I bother signing up for your for your list? Um, so here are just a few like things that you could say because it'll be the first to learn about you know the contract vote. Um, we'll text message you when your work coworkers are having a meeting. Um, you know we'll text you when you need to call the governor's office. Uh, but having like real tangible examples is a lot more compelling than just saying we'll send you useful updates when you know that. What does that mean? It could mean a variety of things. <laughs> And um, you know, it just helps folks kind of understand what they're getting into. And it helps us sort of be honest with ourselves about what do we really mean when we're trying to get folks to send, uh, to sign up. Obviously, we need to pr uh, produce mobile campaigns for growth, um, sort of campaigns that are gonna make workers and members talk to each other. Uh, usually that just requires like sending something of value. We always are asking folks to do something, but um, you know, there are other opportunities to, to communicate with our members, scholarships, um, you know, opportunities that aren't just about asking them to take action, as we know, but that you know might be something that they still would really be interested in knowing. Uh, we touched on this earlier today, so I'll go quickly through this. But we talked about evergreen ways to grow your list. Um, it's a very simple thing, but you know, when some of our local, our local 721 does this every time someone calls their offices as a, a member with a question, they take down their name and their mobile phone number and their email address, and they get their, um, I don't know if they get verbal approval for, I don't think you can get like verbal check off <laughs> of, of a cell phone, but they, they confirm their email uh, address, and you can obviously onboard them onto mobile after you're able to communicate with them via email. We also do the same at events, so it's really just something to think about. Are you, when you're moving through a crowd and getting folks' names and information, are you getting their mobile? Very simple sort of, but a way to sort of, this mobile more than anything else, you really need to be disciplined on what you send out. Um, and so, you know, we, we want buy-in from campaign leaders, but there's always the danger that we'll get too much buy-in and then they'll want to send out a text message like, you know, oh my God. every other day, yes. something important happens. <laughs> so just keep that in mind as you're, you're sort of pitching the opportunity here, um, I sort of always ask myself, is there, is it relevant to the people I'm talking talking to? Can I prove that it's relevant to every single person who's going to receive this text message? And is there sort of an opportunity for them to do something? Um, to either, you know, on a basic level, just get more information, because usually you can't convey that much through under 160 characters. But then more than that, is there an opportunity for them to, um, you know, engage. So on that note, I think like it, we, it's important to remember how mobile is different from especially email, that it's really immediate and intimate. And in my mind, it's really not for communications. You might want a communicator to like take what an organizer is trying to say. Um, and in our intake form that I talked about this morning, we did have that person, that go-between person, right? It was a new media person who translated what the organizer wanted members to know about into like 160 elegant characters that made sense. Um, but beyond that, it's, it's not a communication tool. It's not going to be for broadcasting talking points or messaging. Um, it's really, it's like, it's like one-on-ones. It's like getting folks in a, in a very immediate way to take some kind of action. It's like a phone call. Um, so I think it makes a lot of sense for us. We often talk to our communicators about text messages. We kind of house it with email and with these other 
but it's it's to me in my mind it's far more applicable to people who are, have their you know who are in the work sites every day talking to workers and need to be able to send out a notice that there's a, a last minute meeting taking place in the lunchroom because there's some kind of crisis. 